So you might be seeing the title and you gonna be wondering, oh my god, what are you complaining this time? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not really much of a complainer when it comes to Nintendo in general, just more so the, the gaming developing teams that behind certain games. And um, yeah, it's your boy Franklin here, and today I just want to talk about the Nintendo Switch in general. Now, crazy as it seems, it's been over four years since the original launch of the Nintendo Switch. And looking at these historic, um, you know, these historic number of units been shipped, I believe the Nintendo Wii, the original one, uh, shipped over a hundred million. And so Nintendo Switch is about to peak that, probably even beat it once um, the OLED comes out in what two and a half months from now, and that's pretty soon than expected. Um, I personally have enjoyed playing Nintendo Switch since I got it uh, almost three years ago, I believe. That's been, I think it's been three years, or come December it will be three years. Um, while I don't think it's a perfectly designed system, well, I think personally, even though I don't know how to explain this, but the Nintendo Switch is not flawless, but it does bring a lot of good stuff into anyone's home. Uh, for example, whether you want to play on the go, which has been phenomenal for me um, if I'm going far away and want to hook up my Switch to another Wi-Fi service from across the country, or just simply playing at home on docked, playing it as a true home console. Um, there are still some things that plague the Nintendo Switch, and it makes me wonder what Nintendo really been doing all this time. Now, with the announcement of the new Nintendo Switch OLED system, people have been speculating and wondering why this was announced out of nowhere. I mean, it technically wasn't announced out of nowhere since there were a lot of rumors in regards to a new Switch quote-unquote Pro system. Um, people were expecting a better processing, a bigger screen, more LED options, and more cust customization within our Nintendo Switch systems. So people are still complaining. I'm not the type of guy to really complain because I have my PS5, I have my PC 3080, and I have a Nintendo Switch. I have the best of three worlds, essentially. But I do think Nintendo has fallen behind a little bit on modern times when it comes to upgrading their hardware or even their games to a certain extent. So let's get jump right into it. Uh, this was an article that I just read um, last night because I was just bored as shit. Um, but I touched a little bit of things that you know people have been complaining about for a while and let's just go over it let me know in the comments if you guys consider Nintendo a good company and if they're not what should they improve upon is it their features on Nintendo switch should they just make better games should they have something that the customers or their consumers have always wanted since the beginning of time let me know what y'all think so first thing, customizable home screen. So you can technically switch the color of this between white and black. I use black because I don't like white colors at all, like Discord, Twitch, any program that has a white screen, I want dark mode, you know, and it's pretty cool. And it's pretty interesting that the Nintendo 3DS, as it mentions over here, had that option of changing your home screen with different um, wallpapers or screen papers, whatever it's called. Um, it's very odd that the Nintendo Switch does not have that, given that it has more power than the 3DS. So strange. I don't understand why Nintendo uh, th hasn't done that for their Switch, especially for a device like this or this hardware that is basically raking them billions of dollars at this point. So very strange that they have yet to add customizable home screens. And... Uh, I didn't, by the way, I didn't own a Wii U, so I don't know what the Wii U has. The only thing I know was, like, the virtual console, and that's pretty much it. So, bear with me. And don't forget, this is just all opinion for me. Um, don't berate me. If there's a fact check that I gotta do, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I'll address that in the comments. So, don't kill me. Better discoverability on eShop. Um... Biggest issues that games are presented in an overwhelming visual way make it hard to find what you're looking for. I don't think this is true because if you know what you're looking for, you can just hard search it with the keywords and all that, like Legend of Zelda, then all the Zelda games pop up. So I don't know. Uh, oh, I didn't know there was no rating system. That's very odd. Hmm. That's pretty interesting considering that uh, 
the PlayStation and the Xbox Store. Well, for sure the PlayStation Store or the PS if you get PSN or PS Store, whatever you guys call it, does have a rating system where you can read people's reviews and download um, games whether you like to take it on the challenge of of you know basically trusting reviews or not. I didn't know that this was not in Nintendo Switch eShop because usually I don't buy games that often on the Switch anymore because a lot of games that I buy are either on PS5 or on my PC and obviously with Steam they have a rating system you can check the reviews of all the games that you basically purchase so it's pretty interesting that they do not have that for the Switch and again I feel like if you want to showcase certain games on the Switch highlight them with um, user reviews I think that's the best way to help those games push out into the general public more especially like the mentions here small indie games those indie games, w you know, they might appeal to a, a more of a niche audience, but with those reviews, it can help boost their ratings. It can help boost their sales. It can help um, those indie development teams, you know, stand out more. Look at Undertale, for example. Technically, Undertale was an indie uh, game as well. If you want to go way, way back, like Five Nights at Freddy's is technically considered indie until it blew up, you know, six, seven years ago. So those small independent companies that make these great games could have the opportunity to showcase these games on the Switch, but it feels like Nintendo's doing them a disservice by not giving them rating systems. So um, a recommended for you that and in part that depending on your ratings or other people's ratings, I feel like that just should be on this on the eShop anyways. I feel like to me the biggest problem with the Nintendo Switch. Um, eShop is there's too many games that are just trash and not to you know talk shit about a lot of the games that are on there right now or the teams that put their effort or whatever effort they put in their game there's a lot of games that a lot of mobile games that just show up on Nintendo Switch um, sure they might be free they might be worth less than a dollar but it's just a lot of trash content and Nintendo needs to make sure they're sweeping their eShop once in a while because there's a lot of there's too many games where I don't know how people are still interested in buying those games but good lord there's just way too much trash and a lot of this trash is covering the gold treasure the, that are the the really good indie games um, like Stardew Valley Hollow Knight all those games for example so I feel like they just gotta sweep stuff and yes adding multiple items to your cart I feel like you should be doing this in 2021 I would expect this if it was 2006 but I uh, yeah we we're in 2021 come on Nintendo let's 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 keep up with the with the times key media apps um, obviously the biggest one right now is YouTube there is no Netflix there's no Disney Plus no HBO Max no Spotify and there's Hulu which I know I've, I've been knowing that I think everyone has known there's Hulu's on the switch for a while um, I'm not really sure. Now, I'm going to put a little hot take. I don't really think any of this is necessary because a lot of our, unless you're like a five year old, six year old kid that wants to do everything on the Switch, um, our phones and smart TVs have access to all these apps regardless. So I don't really think it's necessary on the Switch, but it would be a nice touch. Um, and yes, the Wii U also had these, these kinds of media apps. So again, why are we taking stuff out from a system that supposedly failed and not putting into a system that is clearly one of the best um, selling consoles <laughs> of all time? Almost. It's about to be almost all time, like historic levels, but to each of their own. Bluetooth support. Yeah, I feel like we kind of are over the generation of where everything has to be wired on the Switch. <laughs> Um, it'd be nice to run headphones, wireless headphones on the Switch without using a Bluetooth dongle or a third-party app to do all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I know you can use AirPods on Nintendo Switch. I've been knowing that for a while as well. But I feel like I have a bunch of wireless headphones that I want to use on my Switch, but I can't because, you know, the hardware is a little bit outdated. So, yeah, definitely need some Bluetooth support there. Um... USB-C. I think this is fine. I think USB-C is perfectly fine because a lot of phones nowadays 
and a lot of uh, hardware and t technology world is starting to convert into USB-C. So I honestly think just add Bluetooth or develop something that makes Bluetooth a lot easier um, support for all devices that can connect to Nintendo Switch and they'll be perfectly fine. Improved voice chat solution. Yes, yeah, so if you guys haven't known, uh, Nintendo does have an official app for Nintendo Switch where you can talk to people, but um, it doesn't have one included within the Switch itself, which is very strange. Like, why would you put it on a phone, but not on the main device, you know, where the whole point in talking to people is to be directly through your console? Just like PlayStation, whenever you play sports games, it they have the option of creating voice chat rooms but for some reason you need an external device to talk to people and message to people that are on Nintendo Switch that's so strange I, I mean I personally don't get that and yes I know Discord exists and all that but um, it'd be better to if you create your own part of Nintendo Switch you can talk to people directly rather than talking on Discord which you have to turn on your computer or turn on your um, PC or your your mobile device and then talking to people through that to play games on a switch it should be direct messaging system on your switch and yes I did they mentioned discord and all of that and heck even like older games had it so I don't know why Nintendo and you know what I will say this I think maybe Nintendo doesn't want to do it because they're worried about the things people say on voice chat you know everyone knows those call of duties <laughs> old school 360 chat rooms which are notorious for a lot of foul language but I mean come on Nintendo if you want to police that hey there's a report button there should be a reporting system all that I mean it's just so strange that they don't have that an achievement trophy system um Nintendo Hmm, I'm not really too sure. I feel like this should be kept as a staple for the PlayStations and the Xboxes of the world. I don't really think Nintendo Switch systems need an achievement trophy system. I feel like a lot of games, personally, like let's say for Breath of the Wild, you collect all 990 Korok seeds or you collect all the shrine orbs and all that. I feel like achievement systems should be within their own games rather than being it a Nintendo switch um feature um maybe there should be a hundred percent gauges or there should be achievements within the games like i just said so perhaps i really don't think achievements on the switch is necessary but i feel like in game personally those might cater players into you know become a completionist like i am and the virtual console okay so there were rumors from the past year or so where there were a bunch of people saying oh you know the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Virtual Console is coming to the Switch now personally for me I don't really care about a Virtual Console I mean it, if I want to play a game there's emulators and that can do all that but I feel like Nintendo is missing out on a huge opportunity in releasing games that they've created themselves and putting on a Virtual Console I mean, the Nintendo 3DS did that successfully. With by the time um, the 3DS released, you know, virtual consoles for the first and second generation games, that was very popular, and a lot of people played it. On the Wii U, there was a whole eShop collection um, there, and people enjoyed playing those kinds of games. Now, of course, we had games right now on the Switch on the NES and the SNES so that's not too much of a criticism there at least they are releasing games but I feel like if they want an actual virtual console that can potentially bring in a lot of members back into Nintendo Switch and obviously help the integrity of Switch Online the whole point of online of buying a subscription for a year or three months or six months or whatever Obviously, we want to play our games online. Duh. But give us something more. Now, obviously, we are paying $20, whatever the amount is, depending on the family plan or whatever, whatever plan you buy. Obviously, that changes. But for $20, you know, we're buying we're buying internet access to these games. Give us something that can persuade us into keep doing that over and over again. 
imagine playing Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald on Nintendo Switch. Imagine playing um, Chrono Trigger. The possibilities are endless. And the lack of a virtual uh, console is kind of what's putting this Nintendo Switch online a little bit further back. So that's pretty fair criticism. And of course, fixing Joy-Con drift. I know there are some solutions to fixing that, but I feel like if I have to break open my my Joy-Cons, um, yeah, we're at the point where it's been four years. Obviously, there were class action lawsuits a while ago. Um, hopefully, the OLED Joy-Con drift does not happen there, because that would be pretty like that would be DefCon one for a lot of people, because. I know my first pair of Joy-Cons that came with my original Nintendo Switch, um, my l my left Joy-Con actually uh, drifted. So I had ended up buying a second pair and it has been perfectly fine. Um, obviously there are Pro Controllers as well. and um, But the problem is these Joy-Cons are worth $80. Sometimes $70 if there's, on, if there's a sale going on or wherever you buy them from. To buy them separately is kind of a hassle because there's more pairs than singles unless you go to Amazon, unless you go to eBay and all that kind of stuff. And um, these Joy-Cons are pretty expensive for what they're worth. <laughs> and I wanted to buy the Skyward Sword um, models because they look pretty cool. But again, that drift, you may never know when it's going to happen to you. And when it does, it just makes games a lot unplayable, especially fighting games like Smash Bros. Ultimate. You got Joy-Con drift, you can't play that game. As a matter of fact, you gotta fight through it. Breath of the Wild, you're trying to go places. Nope, sorry, you're drifting, boy. So, this should be a problem fixed by now. It's four years, a lot of shit has been going on. Granted, you know, COVID 19 has set a lot of, not just Nintendo, but a lot of gaming companies ba back by a year because of all the stuff going on. But, I mean, come on. This, this shouldn't exist no more. I'm surprised that they didn't mention in these uh, in this article. Granted, it's pretty recent. It got released like July 14. Um, the biggest problem for me is the processing um, features or processing capacities for Nintendo Switch. The OLED was supposed to be the one system where we're supposed to get 4K. We're supposed to get a much better. Uh, GPU, CPU for the Switch. A lot of games such as Age of Calamity, a lot of high intense environmental games on the Switch sometimes stutter, sometimes lose f or frame rates, I should say, because it hits, it pretty much um, pushes the Nintendo Switch to its limits in the processing limits. Um, I feel like if we get a Switch Pro, obviously the OLED kind of debunked that, but if we do get one next year, because it will be the fifth year. Of Nintendo Switch um, next March, I believe. If we get a better processing power, better chips, better graphics uh, card, I think the price of that will be set at will be worth it to buy. Is there a need to buy a new Nintendo Switch? No, but if you don't have a Nintendo Switch, I would recommend of getting the Nintendo Switch OLED. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, a lot of these uh, points I do agree with. Uh, probably the media apps. I mean, we have access to a lot of this stuff on the PCs, mobile devices, TV. So I don't know if that's really worth it right now. Um, but other than that, and the achievement system too. But other than that, I think I pretty much have the same opinions as a lot of people have nowadays. Where yeah, the Nintendo Switch is pretty good, and it's phenomenal. It's been very successful, but Nintendo could definitely improve upon a couple of details and features that can push it to the stratosphere like the greatest game mean consoles of all time. So anyways, anyways guys, um, what do you think? Do you think Nintendo Switch should improve more? Do you think it's perfect just the way it is? If so, let me know what you want Nintendo Switch in the comments down below. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.